there's always something. You, you, you sort of, you don't stop, you don't stop, you don't stop, you don't stop. Are you, are you afraid of comfort? Confidence is right. the enemy of progress. What's, what's Australia compared to London? I won't lie to you, you know, working the best bar in the world, the most historical hotel bar uh, with people like Erin and Declan. It, there is lots of legacy, you know. There were times when I wanted to throw away my white jacket and I cried on the phone and Eric was, God knows, somewhere in Japan. I was like, Eric, I can't. All right, so another episode of Bar Talks. The rules are very simple. You can say whatever the fuck you want. So yeah, I'm here with Martin Hudak, the bridge between the world of coffee and cocktails. <laughs> well, how, how long have we known each other? We know each other, I would say, eight years, nine? Eight, eight years. Yeah, Back. 2014. Yes, yes, and we met in Cuba. Yeah, it's not, the, it's not the worst place to, to meet. And not the out. worst place in the meet, but possibly the worst competition I've ever done in my life. Because you uh, lost. It's uh, okay. Yes, and, and I, also because it was like the most disorganized shit in the world. But here we are. We are in Maybe Sammy. Yep. You, you are a partner in Maybe Sammy here in Sydney. You, Stefano, and Vinny. Yeah. Let's do like a quick reverse timeline. Yeah. You are here now. Yeah. You are uh, part of the Maybe Sammy group. You have maybe Sammy, maybe Frank, Sammy Jr., Dean and Nancy. You're opening two more ideas or venues, I guess, in yeah. the next couple of years, uh, next couple of months even. You have your own coffee. Yep. You are an author. You also are an MC at global coffee events. You are the world and the global coffee ambassador for Mr. Black Spirit. That's the title. You came to Australia four years ago. Yeah, that's correct. Cool. Before that, you were at the Savoy, the American the bar. The legendary Savoy. Before that, you were in Slovakia. Yep. You were an owner of your own ginger beer brand. That's, wow. That's ginger, not, many, not many people know that. Ginger Mania. I didn't, and so that's where the story ends for me. I yeah. remember that you moving to the Savoy. And so tell them to take me back. Yeah, look, uh, I always wanted to be in acting school or I was always tend to be around artists, you know? For me, it was all about the music or, or singing, performance. I just wanted to be center of attention. Simple as that. Right. In Slovakia, saying this to your parents, where we are coming from, you know, a Soviet Union and all of that, telling them, I want to be, you know, free bird, free spirit, and I want to just act and earn money by, you know, doing pretty much nothing. It's something scary. Right. So they said, no, nope, you're canceled. You better go and get a paper from the school. What about hospitality school? You're gonna travel, you learn languages, you learn something. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I started working in hospitality school or studying hospitality school at the same time work in a couple of places. And then I realized I really like it because I still can be center of attention. Uh, so not the, in, the, not the, in the kitchen. I hate the kitchen so much. The key, the key is center of attention. That's, that's the driving factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, really like it to, you know, to be like surrounded by people. Yeah. You know? Uh, didn't like in the kitchen, you know, small environment, clothes, lots of stress, and, uh, and a chef's yelling at you. Didn't like that, quit the job, and I got a job in a local coffee shop, cocktail bar. In Slovakia or Central Europe, they are not just bars and coffee shops, it's together. You make coffee in the morning, you, may, you make beers and shots in the evening. And that's what I did for four or five years. Coming from the eastern part of Slovakia, which is not as developed as the capital, Okay, so you were, in, you were not in the big city? No, I was, no, not at all. I grew up in a farm, small city. There was probably one bar, one coffee shop. That's it. So I always traveled to the capital, went to Prague and tried to do all these competitions and, you know, promote myself. And yeah, it was pretty much easy to become someone in Slovakia because there was like 10 of us at that time competing, right? <laughs> That's really good, David. I like that. In 2010-11, I got this award for like, oh, the, the, the new emerging talent or discoverer of the year. You know, year before was some bidders year after was some book and then in between was me as a human being. <laughs> and I remember that year Eric was giving me an award on the stage. I was like, oh, that's Eric, Eric from the Savoy. So I did lots of competitions. I pushed a lot in the coffee scene, cocktail scene. And 2014, we met in Cuba in Havana. But no one knows where is Slovakia. No one knows who I am. And I was like, oh, how is this possible? Like, I'm doing so many competitions. I'm traveling so much and no one really knows about me. Maybe it's time for me to move on and try to see, you know, what is out there. Right, sort of like the ambitions took you to how far can I go with this? Exactly. So I went to London with the idea I'm the best of the best where I'm coming from. Coming to London, you realize you are ba basically the worst. Oh. The reality just showed me I'm a shit. Happy days. Exactly. You don't know how to speak language. 
you don't know how to make drinks, how to interact with the guests, you don't know nothing about etiquette, how to dress up, how to act. And is that, is that, that seems very self-critical. Oh. Is, are you? That's is it, how I am. Is that, is that part of your, okay. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm hard on my team, my colleagues, but I'm even harder on myself. Because just, that's the way how you push and you become better. So being at the subway just opened my eyes and being like, whoa, okay. And you were part of the golden years, yeah. arguably. Yeah. You know, this is Eric, Declan, you, you had like Luca Caradini, you had Fiat, Joe Schofield. Joe Schofield. And you were there for how long? Four years, nearly four years. Fuck. So when I started in 2014, we were number 28 on the list of 50 best, whatever. The year I was leaving, or year after, we were like number one. We won the best international bar team, best hotel bar. I finally won World Coffee and Spirit Coffee competitions. I did all these big competitions. So all of that happened in one year. And then suddenly you realize, okay, but what's next? You really achieved all of that. You're on the bar all in, on the spotlight. Yeah. And I start feeling comfortable with myself. Of course, there's something you can still learn and be better at. But I was like, this is me back in Slovakia five years ago, four years ago. Ah, right. So did you feel like you hit a, a wall? Right, right, right. And that's why I decided to move to the other side of the world and start from the beginning, from zero. It seems like there's there's always something. You, you, you sort of, you don't stop, you don't stop, you don't stop, you don't stop. Are you, are you afraid of comfort? Is, is, it, is it like... I think that confidence is right. the enemy of progress. I think as soon as you're feeling comfortable, you're not progressing. That means if you are too confident, you're mm -hmm. not gonna be progressive. Right. Okay, okay, cool. So I'm, you have to always doubt yourself. Right. To be able to progress. Okay, okay. And uh, it's like this constant fight, you know? I'm confident because I want some award and my bar is successful. Does it mean I'm gonna push more or less? Mm. Some people win awards and they're like, yeah, that's it, hanging on the hook job done and they just you know become famous or well known and get some money for me it's the opposite i win something it's responsibility so you have to push even more how do you feel about the responsibility considering that you have so much of it you know you're you're responsible to a brand you're responsible to a, a yeah. multiple venues to yeah to many staff you yeah. have you have a daughter you know i think responsibility coming with the knowledge and experience and mm -hmm. i'm at the point of my life where i feel i can handle it but on the other hand, responsibility in any job is not just on your shoulders. I have an amazing team. I have amazing colleagues. They are not my employees. We are mm -hmm. all colleagues. And that's where my responsibility become much easier because mm -hmm. I can rely on people like Paolo or Sarah. I can rely on people like Stefano Filardi and Christian. I can rely on my business partners. I can rely on Mr. Black team. You know, so whatever I do, yes, it looks like I'm having everything on my shoulders, but that's not true. Whatever I do, or whatever you see on social media, me as my face and the product of my hard labor, it's just not me, it's the people around me. So that's why it's so important for me to celebrate them mm -hmm. and showcase them what they're doing for the brand and for us. And when, where did you pick up this way of thinking? I think when I moved to Australia and you open your own bar and venue, you realize that, you know, whatever you do, it's just, you cannot do it by yourself. It's mm -hmm. a group of people. And you have to be honest with yourself. You know, I know, I'm not good with, let's say, a flavor balance. Oh yeah? But I know that I'm good with like whole idea. I can, you know, plant the seed and someone will execute it very well. I know I'm not good with the numbers. So you have to be honest with yourself, you know, who can in your team help you with that? And I think that kind of, you know, sober moment in my life where I realized I cannot be good at everything happened here in Australia. What's, what's Australia compared to London? You know, like you moved to London, you did that. That was one part of your life. Now you're in Australia, it's a different part of your life. Sydney, I think London. Australia have taught me to relax a little bit. Ah, just take it easy. Just enjoy, enjoy the ride, enjoy the moment. At the Savoy, I was under so much pressure. You know, I lost so much weight. I was pale with the panda eyes. You mm. know, I was, I lost my hair. There's the proof. One more bar, I'll be like monk. Now, Australia is like a blank canvas. Hospitality is incredible, but there are still so many things we can do in terms of the bars and creativity. So it kind of makes your life much more enjoyable because mm -hmm. you can still do so much. Right, right, right. While in London you feel like, yeah, it's been done. This already exists, you know, everything's been kind of done. I feel like under the hot pot, like, that's it, you know? I want to escape. Was that, was that personal pressure or was that outside pressure? Was that like the structure there or? I won't lie to you, you know, working in the best bar in the world, the most historical hotel bar. Uh, with people like Erin and Declan. It, there is lots of legacy, you know? 
there were times when I wanted to throw away my white jacket and I cried on the phone and Eric was God knows somewhere in Japan. I was like, Eric, I can't. Um, there were moments where I doubt that I couldn't keep up. There is lots of pressure. Yeah, Savoy is, or any, I don't know, world's best bar these days. You're going through lots of pressure from outside world and the company. Uh, but on top of that, I am myself very, you know, critical and hard. We just mentioned that, yeah, yeah. So it's a combination of both. And what, and compared to like comparing the Sydney community and the, comparing the Sydney markets to say even London, what's it like here? It's amazing. Everyone is so supportive. Like even during pandemic, everyone was helping everyone. You know, we stick together. We visit each other. We spend money in each other bars. We're really highlighting other talents. You know, same way as I'm doing highlighting my colleagues here. We're doing with other bars. I'm very happy if any other bar isn't. I don't know, being in competition or being in this, you know, top ranking list. And that's me personally, and I feel it the same from the others. You know, we've been accepted as experts in Australia by Australians, and it's just amazing to be welcomed like that. Cool, and we spoke the other day, and you mentioned you had some fears about, about people's impression of the bar. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, or? that's a... I'm, I'm glad you remember it. It's a sensitive topic, right? Because maybe send me from outside. Well, maybe this is a good opportunity. It is. And I want to explain myself, and it's hard because people, again, going to just see it. They won't experience it. But from outside, people look at the maybe semi and they think we are just like, you know, a bunch of monkeys dancing behind the bar. They think it's just like a circus. It's sometimes cringy, sometimes, you know, just silly or stupid. And there's a thin line between being silly and being funny and engaging, right? And I want Maybe Semi to be not only the most entertaining bar in the world, I want people to understand we take our beverage program seriously. We take our cocktail seriously and we are on the level as any other world's best bar. We have technologies, you can name it, Rotovap, Supersonics, whatever. We, we do crazy stuff, you know, we are really serious. But being serious about cocktails doesn't make us being serious about ourselves and our beverage program. So I just want to make sure that people don't just think, oh, we are a bunch of monkeys jumping behind the bar having fun. I want them to come here, taste a drink, and even if it's just a classic Manhattan, it's going to be always in a nice frozen glass with a great dilution, great ratio, and it's going to be exactly as you want it. Orange peel discarded cherry inside. And that's who we are. Yeah. We are all about cocktails behind the scenes, but up front, once we are open, and this is our stage, it's all about the guest entertainment. Because also you're you're really branching out, you know. You your glassware is. You were telling me your glassware is yeah. yours. Yeah. Your bottled cocktail RTDs. So you, you're really doing so much at the same time. You're not just stuck in. Yeah. We're a cocktail bar and that's it. No, no, no. Maybe Sammy, it's not the place. It's a brand. Right. It's it's intellectual property which can be really taken everywhere. It can be you know in the duty free shop at the at the at the plane you know. Currently, we have a deal with the Qantas Airlines. No you way. can have our cocktails on the plane. Holy shit. Yeah, well, thanks to Vinny, because, you know, he knows, I don't know, someone who's driving those planes, riding those There's planes. There's unofficial <laughs> prime minister of Yeah, uh, you know, you, you go to big, biggest liquor stores, we work in big brands, fashion brands. So, you know, it's not just a bar, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a entity itself. It's it's a, it's icon, which becoming Australian icon, I would like to say. The people say maybe Sammy, they know what it is. And what's your, uh, what's your personal ambition towards all of that? I would really like to build healthy and sustainable business, mm -hmm. which not leverage only on accolades and awards, but leverage as well on a healthy environment for the employees and the staff. I would like our company to be self-sustainable, so we don't need to rely on, let's say, external investors or sponsors or external money. I would like to grow from within. So all our venues are equally busy, and it doesn't matter if it's a cafe, pizza bar, or cocktail bar, or hotel bar. And I feel like we have potential because we have an amazing team to grow as a group and open more and more venues, and maybe differentiate our portfolio. For you personally, if we imagine Martin Hudak 30 years from now. In 30 years, I'm gonna be 62. I'll be a granddad by then, hopefully, because my daughter is gonna be already a grown up woman. I'm gonna, gonna show that to her. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, hopefully I'll be somewhere in a country where it's sunny, where there is ocean. Just gonna be retired hopefully by then with a dog, That's cigar, awesome. glass of nice whiskey and just reflect on my life and maybe write a memoir. What it was like 30 years ago running a bar with a bunch of Italians on the other side of the world <laughs> and trying to change something and yeah. That's awesome. I'll be happy for sure. You know, some, it's it's really cool to look at people like you who've 
who just work and grind and hustle and st I remember you eight years ago and you still had the same energy you have now, which is fucking awesome. Um, you're still the same happy person and all that kind of stuff. Is there any one like piece of advice or just something you want to share? I'm going to steal this quote from a very famous poet a long time ago, Rumi. Mm -hmm. He said once, at, yesterday I was smart, so I wanted to change the world. Today I'm wise and I'm changing myself. So whatever you do in your life, don't try to change others and the world. Start within. Change yourself to become a better person. And everyone's telling, oh, you're so happy, you're so positive, you're so active. Yes, because that's energy, what I want to spread and infect everyone with. Start with yourself. Doesn't matter what your neighbor's doing, what your friend's doing, start with yourself. And that's the change. And we out. <laughs> Love you, man. Done. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be added to that.